Welcome to the Jelvix channel. You probably heard about the Wasm release in March 2025 with some major advancements. But is it ready for mass adoption yet? Just like many industry experts, this was a hot topic of our coffee break conversations at Jelvix. And guess what? Our team is split. Some of us believe it's a must-use technology in 2025, while others think it's still not ready for prime time. So in this video, we'll fast track you through our discussion and let you explore both perspectives. So you can decide yourself which side you're on. We are Jelvix, a software development partner for industry leaders. We post weekly videos on tech in five minutes. Don't forget to subscribe. And make sure to watch the video until the end to explore a real life cause of using Wasm and whether the company regretted it or not. So let's roll. Now, before we dive into the debate, let's wrap up the Wasm's latest enhancements. For those who are not familiar with WebAssembly yet, at its core, it's a binary instruction format that enables code written in languages like C, C++, Rust, Go, and even Python to run at near-native speeds. Thus, it's positioned as a lightweight, secure, and designed for high-performance use cases where traditional JavaScript sometimes falls short. And with a WebAssembly 2.0 version, it's more capable than ever. Wasm now supports 128-bit SIMD operations, which significantly boosts performance for compute-heavy tasks machine learning, video processing, 3D rendering, you name it. And they're all the backbone of this year's tech evolution. Don't you agree? Next on the list of Wasm, functions can now return multiple values, which improves flexibility and simplifies some logic flows. With bulk memory operations, memory copying and initialization becomes faster and easier. Plus, non-trapping conversions and sign extension add safety and efficiency to numeric operations. And last but not least, with reference types, Wasm modules can interact directly with external objects like JavaScript functions or DOM elements. If you ask our experts, that's an absolute game changer for smoother integration and less glue code. Well, that's at least what our Wasm optimists at Jelvix would say. And as for those who are more skeptical, they have their considerations. As for SIM support, for instance, our experts pinpoint it still demands low-level expertise and has uneven browser support. Multi-value returns do make code cleaner, but our experts highlighted not all languages handle it well yet. And about bulk memory operations, they might simply be overkill for typical apps. Another aspect Jelvix skeptics pointed out is non-trapping conversions. In reality, they mostly matter on low-level logic and have little impact on high-level development. Our skeptical experts weren't impressed with reference types either. In the end, it still needs glue code limiting ease of use in front-end heavy projects. But wait, what about WebAssembly's capabilities before the 2.0 release? Could they be strong enough to turn things around in 2025? Here's what Jelvix skeptics think. Yes, Wasm has always promised near-native performance, sandbox security, and cross-language support. But in practice, many of those benefits have been hard to realize at scale. The lack of direct DOM access, limited debugging tools, and the need for JavaScript bridges makes a part of our experts feel that currently Wasm is just too clunky for front-end work. For example, if used for a browser-based analytics dashboard, one of the current projects our experts are working on, our experts can only imagine the level of limitations. Since there is no direct DOM access, to render each chart, they would need to build awkward JavaScript bridges. And debugging? That's another unneeded challenge, while JS has much more advanced tools to apply in this case. But wait, here comes a team of Wasm optimists. While there's no denying that overall developer experience might slow us down, they emphasize on the potential performance gains, which can be particularly noticeable in some data-heavy modules. For sure, performance is one of the strongest arguments in favor of using WebAssembly in 2025. The ability to run heavy computations, like machine learning modules, video editing, or 3D rendering directly in the browser at native-like speed is a massive advantage. And in 2025, with browser-based AI and real-time media apps on the rise, this kind of performance isn't just nice to have, it's essential for delivering fast, responsive user experiences. Security is another area where WebAssembly shines. Its sandboxed execution model helps isolate code, which reduces vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting. And as our experts rogue, it's highly relevant in 2025, where apps are increasingly targeted and security needs are escalating across industries. And here's another strong point our Wasm fans mention. WebAssembly is an exciting candidate for edge computing. 
Its small binary size, fast execution, and secure model make it ideal for running logic closer to users, where low latency responses are key. With edge networks becoming more common in 2025, this is one of the most promising areas for WASM adoption for our developers. Summing up, so where do we land at Chelix? Well, we believe WebAssembly in 2025 is no longer a niche experiment. It's powering production systems in high performance use cases, but it's also not a default solution for everything. If you're building web apps that need to process large data sets, run AI in browser, or deliver instant edge experiences, it might be time to adopt WASM. Yet, if you're working on a traditional SaaS dashboard or a typical marketplace app, you may find that sticking with JavaScript is still the more practical route. Still, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you using WebAssembly yet or planning to adopt it this year? Let us know in the comments. But hold on, now it's time for the star of the show, real life use cases. Figma is a standout example of WebAssembly in action. To boost performance, the team compiled its C++ graphics engine to WASM, resulting in three times faster load time and smoother rendering of complex vector graphics, all within the browser. Pretty cool, right? With that being said, we hope you enjoyed this video's findings. And if you found it helpful, please support us by liking this video and leaving a comment. And we're sure you'll like this one too. Check it out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. Bye for now.